I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you're having a great time with your technology as I am. I've got all kinds of stuff going on in the technological arena. Don't you hate it when you get a, like a hair stuck in your eyelash? It kind of tickles as you blink and you go, what am I going to do? Anyway, never mind. Let's go into the blog, shall we? The blog, by the way, of course, is drbill.tv. dot TV. Remember, dot TV now. Drbill.tv is the blog, as well as where you go to get the videos. The videos, of course, are the videos that we're recording right at the moment. Yes. Which is Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, which is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Now, before I get to the blog, let me mention that last week's netcast, of course, as usual, was strange, but not only was it strange, it was also misnumbered. It was labeled here on the screen as number 235. Well, as you just saw, this is number 235. So the last one was 234. <sighs> Numbers. They're just so linear. Anyway, I misnumbered it when I had it in the editor, and I'd already posted it, and it was already out in the wild of the internet, so I couldn't exactly pull it back and fix it. So I fixed it in the blog on the screen by putting a slash through it and putting a four at the end over the five. Eh. You do what you can. Know what I mean? Anyway... So the blog is, of course, drbill.tv. I was going to mention that, of course, the name has changed from .cc to .tv, although .cc will work. You know, I'm easy going. But .tv is the official technical name. Yes. All right. In the blog, the first item for this week is the truth about the Mac virus. And everybody was gloating about, wow, Max finally got a virus, nanny nana boo boo. Well, <sighs> the thing about the Mac is, it's based on uh, BSD, OpenBSD, which is a variant of Linux slash Unix, which means it's really not susceptible to viruses as much, well, obviously as much as Windows. And there, there are some Linux, Unix-based Trojans and viruses and things like that out there. Don't get me wrong. I know somebody's going to write me and say, Hey, Dr. Bill, they really are. Well, yeah, okay. But not nearly the tons of viruses, or viri, as I like to call them, uh, as Windows. That's just the way it is. So, it, there was much gloating going on in the computer world that the Mac finally had a virus. Well... Turns out really the Mac isn't what has the virus. It's really a Java vulnerability, and it's only if you have Java installed and enabled on your Mac that you run the risk of having a problem. So, that is the actual truth about it. it says on April 4th, Russian antivirus vendor Dr. Webb, Dr. Webb, published strong evidence that more than 500,000 Macs have been infected by the latest variant of the Flashback Trojan. As Miko Hyponen, chief researcher at F-Secure, pointed out via Twitter, if there are roughly 45 million Macs out there, Flashback would now have infected more than 1% of them, making Flashback roughly as common for Mac as Configure was for Windows. Flashback appears to be the most widespread Mac malware we've seen since the days when viruses, or viri, were spread on infected floppy disks. It could be the single most significant malware infection ever to hit the Mac community. Yes. And so the Mac world is fairly embarrassed by that. But as we will find out, uh, Mac has Mac. Apple, 
this guy at Apple named Mac. No. <laughs> they jumped on it and they've created a fix for the Java vulnerability. Java has also come out with a fix for the Java vulnerability. So there's lots of ways that it's being patched. So the hubbub has died down quite a bit by now. See, that's the thing about something happening earlier in the week. Then it gets fixed. Then by the t end of the week, by the time you're talking about it here on a weekly netcast, it's like, oh, um, we don't care. Eh. Anyway, here's the next item. 38% of American homes are connected to Internet TV or IPTV, as I am wont to call it. Yes. IPTV, of course, being Internet Protocol Television. So, so a netcast like this right here that you're watching is IPTV. It is TV that goes across the interwebs into your computer or your iPad or iPod or your tablet like this or even my HDTV which is in there in the living room. Yes, because I have a Roku box and Roku boxes are just swell. <laughs> yes. People say, I've never heard someone use the, actually use the word swell in an actual conversation. Well, but an old dude, you know. Anyway, just reminds me of the old Batman show, you know. That's swell, Batman. Anyway, 38%. 38%. Now, you think about that. 38%. That's a pretty big number of American homes are connected to IPTV. That means they have a game box or they have oh, a Roku or a Boxy or an Apple TV or a Samsung Smart TV app or whatever connecting to Revision 3, Twit, Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, Blueberry.com, Tech Podcast Network, all the various means by which IPTV traverses into people's homes. Awesomeness. So that's very good news for the Dr. Bill show. So you're out there watching this show, perchance, on your HDTV in your living room, across one of the various networks, iTunes, Blueberry, Tech Podcasts, all the different networks where you can get the Dr. Bill show. How awesome is that? Cool. Yes. Oh, and by the way, in that regard, this week's sponsor is Citrix Systems with their awesome GoToMeeting product. GoToMeeting now comes with HD faces, meaning you can participate in an online meeting across the interwebs with GoToMeeting. Now, if you've got a 16 by 9 screen, I went the wrong direction, <laughs> screen from your webcam, then of course you can use that for your GoToMeeting conferences and meetings and demonstrations. Awesome! So take advantage of this special offer right here on the screen and use the keyword podcast. P-O-D-C-A-S-T, podcast, as your keyword. And that will make sure that the Tech Podcast Network, such as this program right here, gets credit for you checking out their 30-day free deal. Dude, 30 days, one whole month, free for GoToMeeting. Awesome deal. All right, next item. Microsoft pays $1.1 billion for AOL's patents. What's up with that? You gotta wonder what the deal is. Um, it says one chapter of AOL's patent journey is coming to an end. The company is selling 800 patents to Microsoft for just north, as opposed to south, of one billion dollars. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of bucks. No matter how you look at it. So, what are they gonna do with these patents? Knowing Microsoft, it will be evil. They are typically up to evil. Just saying. Okay, next item, Google Chrome. I've got a lot of items. i got to get through them, okay? So just kind of bear with me that I'm rushing through some of these. Google's Chrome OS will soon look a lot more like Windows. Now, this is interesting. The new beta version of the Chrome OS was seen, and there's like a bar at the bottom and like what looks like almost a little start button, except it's a Google logo. 
<laughs> not the little orb from Microsoft, but basically it looks very Windowsy. So it's more like a real operating system rather than just a browser, you know. I mean, it's still going to do all the same browsery stuff. And I'm not, now remember here, I'm not talking about Chrome, the web browser. I'm talking about Chrome, the operating system, such as is on Chromebooks and some netbooks have installed the Chrome. I've done that. I've tried it on a netbook and different things. And it's, it's kind of a variant of Linux, but it is Chromified, if that's a word. So it's going to be more operating system-ish. Yes. Whoa! Uh, that <laughs> drum roll is getting annoying. That drum roll is, of course, telling us it's time for the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is totally amazing. No, that's not the name of it. <laughs> it just really is totally amazing. It's called Cameo. Cameo. You know, it's like mayo with cut in front of it. Cameo. <laughs> and it actually, it could be pronounced Cameo if you wanted to read it that way, but I think it really is Cameo. If you listen to the, their video, I think they say Cameo. So anyway, you said, boy, Dr. Bill, you got a lot of problems with the name. Let's, let's move on. Okay. Sorry. The whole idea of this package is, first, it is free. Free. Now you say, well, Dr. Bill, most of the Geek Software Weeks you talk about are free. Yes, I try to get them to be free, but this one is absolutely amazing for this reason. It is an application virtualization tool, okay? Like you would use in a big enterprise wide thing. But you can use it, of course, personally because it is 100% free. But guess what? It's even free in the business world. Even if you use it in your, in your business to virtualize applications, it's free. Now, of course, you know, I know you're going to say, well, yeah, but Dr. Bill, if it's not something I've purchased, then it means I don't have support for it, which means I've got to, I can't choke the vendor. You know, they always talk about one throat to choke. I always thought that was rather harsh. You know, I'm just an easy going guy. One throat choke. But I know what they mean. It means that the vendor is responsible to make sure the software is continually updated and, and secure and all those good things. And I understand that. I mean, I'm a system administrator. I understand it. But, you know, it depends on what's most important to you. Is it the money for those licenses? Or is it the fact that you've got the one throat to choke? Just say it. Think about it. Anyway, but for small businesses or individuals, this oh, this rocks. Because here's what you can do. And, and I mentioned this. Here's my instructions that I wrote out in the blog entry. Build a simple, unpatched, okay? Now, you do it unpatched. This is something I learned in the Thin App class that I went to that I mentioned a few weeks ago. Um, they recommend when you use, when you, when you, Go to virtualize an application. Don't patch it because by patching it, you're introducing variables. If you just stick with the plain vanilla operating system without a whole bunch of patches, because after all, this is going to be running in a virtualized environment. You're not going to have to worry about security issues and holes and things of that nature, okay? So in class, they told us to use an unpatched version of a VM, virtual machine. Which I found interesting because, you know, my, like I said, I'm a system administrator. My first thing that I would do is patch, 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 patch. But they said not to, so okay, we'll go with that. It certainly makes it quick and easy to bring it up because you just, you know, mount the ISO, do the install, you're done. But anyway, build a simple unpatched Windows XP image in your favorite hypervisor. You know, like I like VirtualBox, I've mentioned that before. Obviously, VMware works, whatever you want to use. Matter of fact, I had an email, actually it was a reply in the blog from someone that suggested Virtual PC, because I was talking about how much I like VirtualBox. I think it was, I think it was a reply to my YouTube version of this video, and it's actually on the YouTube site, so cool. But at any rate, whatever hypervisor you want to use, then you run Cameo, it'll come up and say, I'm recording now. Then install your software package, whatever it is. Maybe it's Firefox or Opera or, I don't know, FileZilla. You know, whatever, whatever you want to install. 
install your package and any dependencies and whatever, make sure it's all working right. Then click the end install option in Cameo and it will shrink that environment, the entire environment, the registry, the files, the executable, the DLLs, everything down into one executable. And that one executable then can be put on a thumb drive, it can be put on a network file share, so in your local home network, like I've got a right behind me back there is my uh, Ubuntu Linux server that is my file server, so I've got a file share there, I could put it out there, and then on any computer I wanted to, I could reference that executable on that file share without installing it, without having DLLs, without having dependencies, without having to go through an install, I can just click on it and it will run that application. Now, the beauty of that, of course, is you can put it on your thumb drive, you can take your applications with you wherever you go, plug it into a computer, you don't even care where it is, work, library, friend's house, and run your application with all your customizations just like you want it. Dude, that's cool. And of course, it's very cool on a business network. I mean, I, I'm all about application virtualization. That's pretty much one of the main areas that I work with, uh, that I work with at the hospital where I work. High Point Regional. I mean, come on, dudes. This is awesome stuff. And it's 100% free. That's what amazes me. Okay, so there is a video on the blog called the Cameo Portable App Virtualization Video. Click that, watch it, and you will be amazed at the features that are in that Geek Software of the Week. Dude. Okay. Next item, Apple has a flashback removal tool in the works. Now this was an ongoing story. Like I said, they, they announced there was a problem on the 4th. This, by the time I wrote this, was the 10th. And they just keep talking about the fact that yes, they're coming out with it. Well, they have now come out with it, all right? So it's out there. So we'll just kind of move on because like I said, I got a lot of stuff. Next item, Microsoft warns of the termination. It's like the Terminator. Dude, I'll be back. Anyway, Microsoft warns of the termination of support for Windows XP and Office 2003. Now, what's that mean? It's like, you know, the guy at the end of the TV shows that goes, what's that mean? Pointing to a tree. It's a tree, dude. Get over it, you know? I mean, what does a tree mean? Who would you be if you were a tree? Remember that Barbara Walters question? What? Anyway. Pine, by the way. Anyway. You know, well, they're tall and straight and and cool, just like pines. Of course, I like dogwoods too. But anyway, never mind. Microsoft <laughs> warns that the termination is coming, and I say here, time to get serious. Uh, and I misspelled serious. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. You know the routine. Why do I do this? Anyway, time to get serious. <laughs> get off of Windows XP and Office 2003 soon. Official support will be over as of April 2014. No more patches, no more call-in support, nothing. Zilch, zero, nada. Okay? Now, you say April of 2014? Dude, that's two years away. Believe me, two years goes by just like that. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's going to be 2014. You'll be going, what happened? What happened? <laughs> anyway, so if you if you work somewhere that they're still running XP or you're still running it at home, what? What's up with that? Get off of XP and move to Windows 7. Come on. Windows 8's about out. I mean, come on. If you're going to be behind, be behind only one version. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I like the little picture that I have here of Windows XP with a red slash X through it. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of makes you feel good, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I like XP okay, and don't get me wrong, but I like 7 better, so, eh. And of course, I normally use Linux. Just saying, there's Tux. Linux. Okay. The first working quantum network is up and running. Wow. Imagine computing at the atomic level with atoms as network nodes and photons as transmitters of data. Zowie. 
Well, guess what? They've done it. I mean, totally, they've done it. Anyone want to bet how long it is before we have Data's positronic brain? Brains. <laughs> Zombies, you know, they're after brains. Never mind. Anyway, scientists build the first working quantum network. Scientists at the Quantum Dynamics Division of the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics, MPQ, in Garching, <laughs> Germany. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Announced Wednesday that they, they have built the very first elementary quantum network composed of a pair of entangled atoms entangled atoms that transmit information to each other via single, one single proton. Well, protons. I mean, like a stream of data that's on protons, dude. Wow. That and a couple of bucks will get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> I like this person that writes this. I didn't write it. There's somebody else. Matter of fact, it's on, uh, it's on PC Mag. So, might as well give the person credit for whoever wrote it. It is Damon Putter. Putter. Who wrote that? I like that. That and a couple of bucks will get you a cup of coffee. Plus anything from a perfectly secure data exchange system to the massive scaling via distributed processing of the already mind-bogglingly powerful, if theoretical, potential of standalone quantum computers. <sighs> wow. It just makes you just totally amazed. So quantum computers, like I said, data's positronic brain can't be far off. You know what I mean? I mean, just wow. Okay, next item is a computer language copyrightable. Is the word copyrightable? Copyrightable. <laughs> anyway, a computer language. Here's the thing. It says, well, is it? Oracle says yes. Google says no. What you write, that is the code of a program written in a language is copyrightable, but what about the computer language itself? That is what Google and Oracle will be hashing out in court starting this coming Monday. Stay tuned. So that's what they're arguing about. Google is saying that no computer language is copyrightable. And Oracle is being somewhat evil about it. They want to make sure that everybody pays out the wazoo for whatever computer language they're using, like Java, which is their thing since they bought Sun Microsystems and destroyed the open office project and now everybody should be running LibreOffice. Just saying. Truth. Anyway. Word. So. And whoa! <laughs> Geek Software of the Week. <laughs> extra, extra, extra. This came up this morning. Was it this morning? Well, it's kind of a, yes, the fix came up this morning, but the problem started yesterday. Okay. Yesterday, I went into my WordPress blog, drbill.tv, and I get this notice. You need to upgrade a plugin. Okay. So I upgrade the plugin, which is Viper's Video Quick Tags, which I have done over and over and over and over and over for years and years and years and years because I've always used Viper's Video Quick Tags plugin for WordPress to embed YouTube videos. Now you can embed Vimeo videos and a bunch of other kinds of videos. That's all well and good, but I only used it for YouTube. That's just me, okay? Not Maybe not you, but that's what I used it for. So I did the upgrade, click, let it upgrade automatically like I usually do. And as I usually do, I went and tested a video that was embedded on my web page in drbill.tv, in this case, the Cameo video. Guess what? It wasn't embedded. It took me directly to YouTube. That's not embedding. Embedding means you embed. You know what I'm saying? It runs from the page. So I was like, oh man. Now, I could have restored from backups the version of Vipers that did work, yes. But I got to thinking, you know, that's a lot of trouble. I don't want to do that. There ought to be a plug-in that just does YouTube embeds, and I could be done with it. So I went out and found Artis, and that's A-R-T-I-S-S. -S, you got it right there. Artis YouTube Embed. Dude, 
I'm glad I found it. It's actually very powerful, very flexible, has a lot of options in it, and it works great. And here's the good part. This is the part that really kind of saved my time this morning when I was looking at it, and that is this. It uses the same embed code of the bracket YouTube, YouTube location, you know, and then the whack YouTube close bracket syntax, <laughs> which is all throughout my blog. I mean, for years I've been using Vipers and that code is throughout the entire blog. So by just disabling Viper and enabling artists YouTube embed plugin, it worked and it worked great and it was so awesome and it had all these cool features. Dude, I mean, you can go in there and you can click and, and still embedded, you can see the description of the YouTube video, the number of views it, it's had, uh, just tons and tons of info from the Artist YouTube embed technology. So it's awesome. It uses uh, HTML5 compliant, works with latest browsers. It uh, uses object iframe Chromeless and Embed Plus. Dynamic video sizing for responsive sites allows users to add videos to comments, build your own playlist, just on and on and on and on, feature after feature after feature. Dude, it's awesome stuff. So I'm telling you, you need to use Artis, T-I-S-S, video embed for YouTube. So it's YouTube embed actually. I had to recover and it didn't quite work. It's time for geek wisdom. I had forgotten recently that I need to be reading you geek wisdom on the netcast. So, geek wisdom. I opened randomly, you know how that works, just randomly open, and here it is. What is your damage, Heather? <laughs> From Heather's. Okay, never mind. You know what's the worst? High school. Every geek has seen the havoc high school can wreak. Wreck? Reek? Reek. In a way, few mainstreamers can understand. Somehow, most teen movies construct their stories so that their heroine ends up with a dream date at the school dance. Their hero wins the big game. And everything ends up alright. But most of the high school is not alright. And Heather's realized that. Head beep. Heather McNamara's self beeping there. Heather McNamara's signature catchphrase manages to be dismissive, aggressive, and superior at the same time. The school, the soul school, the soul crushing gift of the high school click master, click master, and literally haunts the counterculture girl Veronica long after Heather is dead. I've never seen this movie, so none of this is making any sense. Anyone who's been bullied recognizes the power play at work in this put down. An important geek rite of passage to adulthood is trying to move past the power your two cool enemies have over you. If you can't quite get there, well, we hardly blame you. Some meanness is immoral. Immortal. It's immoral, too. But immortal. As long as you don't start playing strip croquet with strangers, you'll probably be fine. What? Now what does the fine print say? The fine print is, wow, fine print. By starring in the quick triple threat of Beetlejuice, 1988, Heathers, 1989, and Edward Scissorhands, 1990, Winona Ryder became the face of girl geekdom for a generation. It would continue with Dracula, Little Women, Joe is a proto-geek, and Alien Resurrection, among others. What's your damage, Heather? Okay. <laughs> that, of course, comes from Geek Wisdom, the sacred teachings of nerd culture. Yes. So, there you go. I just read them. I don't make them up. Okay. So, We've reached the end of another DrBill.tv video netcast. And this is, of course, Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon saying that the doctor is out of here.
Bill, the Computer Curmudgeon, is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.